Should we bash anglers when they have to police themselves and others? The 2024 season has been filled with little fishing dramas and we're going to go over some of it and really I want to know your opinion on where an angler should stand on confronting or telling someone of a discrepancy that they've seen. Now if you like this kind of content make sure you click that subscribe and like button and welcome to the team. There's been several of these that have happened recently. The first one is Andrew Upshaw and the Brian New situation. Andrew did a video and I recommend you go check out his video and Brian did a video or talked about it too. Now Brian came in on Andrew and went down the bank a little bit and there was a fish that they thought was an, on a bed and supposedly Brian blew it out by running his trolling motor back and forth. Now there were several other people that watched this and Andrew took a lot of grief and so did Brian and Brian appealed the situation but in a panel of his peers or whomever was on it decided he was wrong and they had they had a penalty for him. After that we've had it recently with the boat crash here on the Popka on the Harris chain that happened and in the comments I've seen non-stop people saying asking would or did Eric go out there and after he saw it did he call the tournament director and tell look tell on them and some people might call it tattletailing or some people might have a whole different way of wording it but I talked to Eric personally and he did call in and talk to the tournament director and said look this is what happened this is what I saw and in Eric's case and I'm not speaking for him in talking to him he was really worried about the backlash that would happen because he saw something and it should have been and the angler should have policed himself and it shouldn't have happened now we have the new one from Gerald Swindle and the trade McKinney. Now, if you didn't know this, on the St. John's, on day two, Trey McKinney had a 90-minute penalty, and he had to start 90 minutes after everyone else. And while it, in hindsight, maybe it didn't hurt him fishing, I don't know if it helped him too, because his bright bite was so early in the morning on day one that he wasn't able to go to it. Now, in the tournament briefings, as they have their Zoom meeting or whatever, they the tournament director said, this area is a non-marked no-wake zone. And he didn't know, we know now, because Gerald made a great video about it and I'll put some clips in here Gerald talked about how he was on he was making a long left-hand turn and on the left-hand turn a boat flew by on the inside of him and ran through this no wake zone and his marshal asked who was this and they said he said that was Trey and Gerald went fishing then came back in and then confronted man to man face to face much respect Trey now the anglers when they come in have to sign a slip saying that they didn't see anyone they didn't do anything wrong and they didn't see anyone else do anything wrong and I have the exact thing from the bass rules of competition and I'm gonna read it and this is C1 elite series pros are required to police themselves each competition day and must sign a rules adherence form. If any pro has a concern, concern regarding their catch or knowledge of possible violations by another competitor, they should not sign on the rules adherence. Now that's what Gerald did. He didn't sign it. He wanted to confront Trey and have Trey go out there and do what was right. Let's keep going. Instead, they should they should weigh their fish and consult the rules officials immediately after weigh-in. Anglers who sign off on the full adherence are and are later found guilty of a rules violation may be disqualified from the tournament. Anglers not signing an official rules adherence form or scorecard will not start next official competition day unless directed by tournament officials. Now they have rules and penalties that happen, but this is what happened. He got penalty, penalty A, a reduction of practice hours or competition hours as determined by the tournament official. Now what Gerald went and did is Gerald went and talked to Trey and Trey wasn't going to, I, it sounded like, and there's two sides of every story, that Trey wasn't going to police himself and that Gerald needed to bring it up to the tournament officials. And what Trey said was, was wrong. He put out his hand and said, good for you. Good for you. And that's where this comes into play. So should anglers get involved when infractions happen. The no wake zone was explained in the meeting. It wasn't posted. Most veteran anglers or people who'd fished there before knew of this no wake zone. And supposedly it was said four plus times in the Zoom meeting. And they have a Zoom meeting before most tournaments. Now, Gerald has integrity and accountability. And he felt like the organization kind of threw him under the bus. And this is where my question comes to you. Do you agree or do you disagree? Do you feel like if an angler goes out there and, I don't want to say tattletale, but polices another angler and when they do something wrong and then brings it up to the organization, should there be a backlash from the fans and the organization? Now, again, Gerald doing this isn't something that he wants to do. Most anglers do not want to have to 
actually go out there and police their own because then they could get a reputation or they might get some backlash from it. But as you know, I'm here. I am very open about all I can do. I try my best to do everything that I can do to give you the right credentials or the right information. And I know I mispronounce people's names all the time. I'm not perfect. I forget people's stuff. It's a, it's a old age thing, but I respect everyone's opinion. And in this case, while I have only met Gerald a handful of times and never really talked to him because quite honestly, I've always felt intimidated by Gerald. I think he's a big name guy that has a great, has had a great tournament career, but he's funnier than me. That's just how it is. He's a pro he's a better fisherman than me too. And Gerald has a big personality, a very big personality. So I've always felt slightly intimidated by him and I've just handled how I deal with him differently. But in this case, I don't think you can take anything away from him. I know it was a hard decision to do what he had to do, but it was the right thing to do. And as fans and other people, anglers and so forth, he should be acknowledged for what he has done and how he's handled this situation instead of people throwing him under the bus or bashing him. And I know I'll put a link in the video below, in the description below. His video got thousands upon thousands of positive comments, but he felt like he was thrown under the bus. And if other anglers are policing everyone, this is the only way we can make a standard of how anglers should should work or how anglers should act. And there's rules inside the whole guidelines of these organizations on what you can say and how you can be slanderous and so forth. But we shouldn't hold people down for doing what is right. You can like or dislike me or think I'm whatever other people say. But I try to give an honest opinion and how I see things. And if you've got something negative to say for someone who's policing their own and doing what's right, you need to look inward. And it's disrespectful for people to attack Gerald in this situation or to attack Eric in that situation or to attack, attack Andrew. And you might not like either one of them or any of them or me, but we have to have respect for each other. And what, what Gerald did, I feel like, is completely top-notch. I think that was... I don't, I don't know why he'd be thrown under the bus anytime about this. There should be more anglers that are willing to do that. Because there are a lot of good old buddy pals that probably if they see someone and they're in that clique or group, they might not tell on each other. And Gerald, even though he isn't... He and Trey probably aren't really close friends because Trey is new to the, the Bassmaster Elites. He still did what was right. So you got to give him a pat on the back and commend him for his accountability and his and everything about what he is. His morals. That's what it comes down to, his morals. He wants to see a fair fight. He wants to see everyone be able to catch fish because it's his job. He wants to see everyone have a a level playing field and if you're not playing on a level playing field and you're getting advantage over another one well is it a level playing field no so i want to see your comments below and tell me what you think of this situation and the others please if you haven't hit that like and subscribe button i really would appreciate it if you at least subscribe thanks for hitting it remember take a kid fishing get your fish on i'll talk to you very soon cheers